Um, welcome everyone to this meeting. Um, yeah, I'm pretty cold. So it's getting colder in the UK and chances are it's getting colder with wherever you are too. If you're like me and you work from home and your room is starting to get pretty chilly, you probably don't want to be turning your heating on all the time and wasting a lot of money to try and stay warm. So I have a few tips for you in this video, hopefully ones you've probably heard of a bit, but also I'm hoping there'll be some new ones as well. So give you some good ideas about how to stay warm when you're working from home. So firstly, why bother trying to keep yourself warm? Obviously there's comfort, but actually a lot of research has shown that if you work in a warmer environment, your concentration levels are improved um, and actually your number of errors you make on your work are reduced a lot. I've made a couple of videos, but specifically I made one video about temperature and how it affects our work concentration. So you can watch that if you like. But anyway, staying warm while working is important. So here are sort of six aspects to think about when you're working from home. Firstly, obviously, is your clothing. Now, of course, you could, you know, wrap yourself in dozens of blankets and your thickest jumpers. But if you've got online video calls like I do, I don't really want to be looking uh, like some sort of huge a shivering mess on the other end of a call. It doesn't look particularly professional. So a good place, at least to start, is choosing a good warm base layer, like a skin or a vest of some kind. The past few days I've been wearing this sort of sports skin that I normally use for hockey. It works quite well. And this just allows me to wear like a smart shirt on top of that, and usually that's warm enough for my top half. Also, you're likely to lose a lot of heat from your feet, and these are probably one of the things that will get the coldest the quickest because of the blood circulation. It's obviously quite far away from your heart. So naturally, generally always try and double up your socks or try and get some really thick woolly socks that are going to keep you warm uh, throughout the winter. So as I mentioned earlier, having a base layer allows you to wear like a smart shirt if you want to look smart for really cool. Obviously there are times when you're going to be so cold that you kind of need another layer on top of that. And this is where I'd suggest wearing like a coat that's sort of your branded company coat if you've got one um, just because it looks a little bit more smart and a little bit more professional for the company that you're working with. Obviously if you know your company doesn't provide you one of those just wearing like a smartish looking coat will you know help. So next is obviously thinking about additional layers other than your clothes so this includes things obviously like a sleeping bag or uh, blankets or even electric blankets. Again I would try and recommend you keep these on your lower half so if you do have video calls uh, you're not looking on a professional and keeping your legs warm is also very important because it's a big surface area uh, to lose heat from. But this section of layers is really to link into my next section which is to do with heat sources. A really obvious but I'm going to say anyway and beneficial way, cost effective way of keeping you warm is to buy an electric blanket. They are significantly cheaper than using your heating system to keep you warm. And because it's so localized, literally you can wrap it obviously around yourself. The heat is just directed onto you and it's not wasted in your environment. Don't underestimate the power of a hot water bottle too. One thing my wife always tells me to do um, to, so we don't put the heating on too much is to get a sleeping bag and pull it up to at least to your waist and then put a hot water bottle at the bottom of the sleeping bag because that will keep your feet warm, which is obviously, like I said, important for not losing too much heat. But also, the heat will sort of float up, it will convect up the sleeping bag, through your legs, and then into your body. And it won't be sort of wasted to the environment as much. So it acts as sort of an additional insulation layer. So you also need to combine these sort of little heat sources with your layers to keep that heat in where you are. Another heat source that you might not actually appreciate is yourself. Naturally, when we're sat down for ages and ages, uh, hours at on end, we get colder because we're not moving, we're not using energy. So a really good way of keeping yourself warmer is just regularly getting up, going for a little walk, maybe go around a walk uh, on your local streets, or maybe do some press ups, some star jumps, because um, you can create a lot of heat for yourself, uh, which actually will keep you going for longer than you might realize and it's just generally good advice for working from home to be getting up from your desk uh, more regularly than you probably already currently do uh, as this is just good for all your joints as well and it, in some ways it is free heat sort of the next area to think about and may not be applicable for all of you is to choose the most appropriate room in your house for your office if you can try and choose a smaller room why because it's much smaller volume of air to heat up. So when your heating does come on in the morning, if you if you are heating your room, it will be a lot quicker to get warm and it will be a lot slower to lose its heat because it will probably get warmer in the first place. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, then 
if you can have a room that's south facing, you'll get more sunlight in and obviously the sun is a great way of heating up your room uh, through radiation. And if you're in the southern hemisphere, you would rather have a north facing room as that's gonna get more sun. And again, if you have the ability to choose, try and pick a room that's got the least number of walls facing the outside world. This is just to do with heat loss and insulation. The more walls facing the outside world, the bigger the heat loss. And ironically, that's why my choice of office is pretty terrible because I'm in the attic room and it's got like three facing uh, walls to the outside world and it gets quite cold uh, in the winter. So I wouldn't follow that advice. And finally, no matter what room you're in, always try and reduce the amount of draft that you're getting into the room. So for example, always closing your doors is a good uh, practice for keeping the heat in. If you can get a draft excluder or just roll up a towel, put it at the bottom of your door. Um, to check to see if there is a draft coming in, you can just put your hand over your window or uh, any of the cracks in the door and feel if there's any cool air coming through. If there is, you've got a draft and you can hopefully patch it up. If you reduce the amount of airflow, uh, then you're gonna lose less heat through convection. The next point is relating to energy bills. If you have to work from home and your company does not provide you an office that you could work in, then you can actually apply for tax relief in the UK this is. Uh, I was trying to research this and sadly I can't do that because our company does have an office that we could go to, it's a bit far away from me, but effectively I can't actually apply for that tax relief because they do provide an office. If your company doesn't provide you an option to work in an office, then you can apply for tax relief and I'll probably put it up on the screen about how you can do that. And naturally obviously this means you can hopefully spend a bit more money on heating your room up and keeping you warmer. And finally here are some additional little techniques you can use to keep yourself warm. One thing I love to do is eating a hot lunch rather than a cold lunch as this will just you know, make you feel nice and toasty and warm. Um, for example I like to have soup or baked potatoes and baked beans or maybe like a pasta dish if you've got a bit of time. Um, I just, it's just fun eating nice food as well, but a warm dish will help you to warm up a bit. And of course, I probably don't need to tell any of you to do this, but having that cup of tea or cup of coffee just warm you up a bit um, and it's yeah, just really nice, isn't it? And if you get the chance, why not work from your bed for an hour or so uh, to keep yourself nice and comfortable and warm? I hope that helps and keeps you nice and warm and comfortable in the next day when you work from home. If you wanted to watch that video about why you should try and keep yourself warm and really the benefits of that, then you can watch that video over here. See you next time.